Thanks, Ruth. Thanks, everyone. Um, I can let everyone in on a secret. Perhaps some people don't yet know this, but apparently, and I don't know this because I haven't worked out how to get into it yet, but on Slido, you can repeatedly vote for one thing. I've got mental health colleagues who've been pressing like, 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 like all morning, as well as other colleagues who are particularly interested in mental health, but isn't that good that mental health is absolutely up there? Um, as Ruth said, I'm, I'm Helen. I'm the Chief Executive of the Mental Health Trust across Kent and Medway, and I think today marks a really important point in our discussion about the totality of of health and social care across the county. Um, we are blessed in this county that our STP has absolutely embraced the importance of mental health um, and preserving health and well-being from a mental health and psychological perspective. Um, I don't have to argue, as some other colleagues nationally do, or elbow my way into meetings and discussions. Um, we're there and sometimes I don't even start it. Other people do, and that's absolutely how it should be because mental health affects us all and all those we serve, of course. So, there's never been a better time, really, I think. And picking up on some of the speakers' comments this morning, um, this is a once-in-a-generation opportunity, I think, not only to tackle health and well-being across the whole county and country, but actually to put mental health where it belongs, right in the centre. Um, we know, don't we, that a mental health issue of some sort, severe or otherwise, will affect one in four of us. One in four of us. Look around this room. That's a huge number. Um, and if it doesn't affect me directly, it will certainly affect someone I love. So it's absolutely vital. And when you think about the populations admitted to acute general hospitals, if 25% of those people have got some sort of mental health need, then it even makes the case more clearly that that's where we need to be. Um, uh, Diana just mentioned the importance of stepping up ambition, really, and making sure that mental health is absolutely at the heart. I think that's entirely right. I was talking to a colleague in Oxford, actually, on Friday, um, and he's a consultant psychiatrist, and he works in the acute general hospital, employed as one of the multiple ologies in the acute hospital and belongs to that hospital. So when he's talking about symptoms unexplained, and as we call them locally, uh, medically unexplained symptoms, and isn't that interesting? that the nuance is just different. So for me as a patient, um, having a symptom unexplained feels different from a medically unexplained symptom. I think it gives credence to the fact that I'm experiencing that symptom. It's just that we haven't worked out what might be causing it, and it might be a psychological cause. How interesting, and how interesting the results that they're starting to see there. So I think the time is right to step up our ambition, think about how we want to alter things in, in Kent and Medway. We know that people who have a mental health need, and particularly the serious mental illnesses, die on average 10, 15, 20 years sooner than the rest of the population. So there is a burning platform there. If that was any other sort of diagnosis, the country would be in absolute uproar. It's a scandal that we've tolerated this, and we mustn't anymore, and hence the STP being so important and such a golden opportunity. Um, Diana mentioned the five-year forward view, and we've heard about it through the day. There is a five-year forward view for mental health. Now, interestingly, in our STP, we've been saying we mustn't have mental health as an add-on. It can't be an annex or a special thing or a slightly different version from. It has to be at the heart because mental health and well-being is at the heart, and that's how you transform things. So when Chris Hobson made the observation earlier today about... Um, some mental health organisations finding it difficult to find a place. And I think the phrase he used about the acute trust was big and burly. The big and burly acute trust dominating the agenda. Actually, we're really clear that we don't want that to happen collectively as an STP. We are making sure that we are all talking about all the things that affect all of us. So that means me being as concerned about stroke or vascular as someone in an acute trust. And similarly, that being reciprocated with the people that we serve. So really important that the five-year forward view for mental health is remembered and how helpful that for the first time nationally um, we've got really clear targets which actually in this county we're doing pretty well with if you think about one of the major drivers in the five-year forward view for mental health it's about stopping out of area placements clearly moving people around the country particularly just because you don't have capacity locally is, is not ideal. It takes them away from their clinical teams. Awful to be taken away from your family when you're acutely unwell. Um, and it slows recovery, so people end up staying longer. 
As bad as that is the financial cost of it. And if you think back just a year ago in this county, we in KMPT had 76 patients in private beds out of county, some as far flung as Manchester and Hull. Um, even if those beds had been free, even if they were free, it would have been all sorts of wrong. Those poor patients, miles from families, families not able to visit, clinical teams not able to follow them up, and the quality of care sometimes, I have to say, poor. The cost of that per month to the system as a whole was over £1 million a month. We've sorted it out through clinical leadership and management unlocking the talent and removing the barriers. We've sorted it out. So as I stand here today, none of our patients go to private beds. They're all looked after in KMPT beds. I'm sharing that because the driver for STPs and sustainable transformation is about two things, I believe. It's about driving up quality and ironing out the inequalities that we've heard about through the day. It's also about making sure that the books balance. And that's a really good example of where we've done the two things together. And when I talk to patients now and families and to staff, the relief that is present because they know that if they need to come into hospital, they can come into a KMP bed locally. Um, and staff know that there's the capacity there to admit someone when they need to come in. Clinical leadership unlocked all of it. And I think we come back to that throughout all the presentations today. So what we know, um, we know that the right care in the right place at the right time is absolutely fundamental. We're told over and over whether our patients are people who have mental health needs or acute need for uh, urgent medical treatment. I just want the right care in the right place at the right time. And I think through the STP we can do that across all the services. One really good example and something to really celebrate across our county in terms of the five-year forward view, and again, thinking about what we can really motor with together, is that we've got, we're, we're one of four national um, new perinatal mother and baby um, units, so KMPT will have that. So it will be on our patch for the parents that we serve to be admitted with their babies when they've got a mental health need after delivery. It's brilliant, really good, cause for celebration. Um, and we know too, don't we, that staying at home is so important to people. People don't want to come into hospital unless they absolutely have to. And Dorothy, and I think it's a really clever and logical human response to how we're re-engineering systems. Let's talk about people. Let's use an individual and think about how they might better be served by a system that we can re-engineer. Um, and Dorothy, I think, is the example of exactly how that will work in real terms, so that when we come back together again next year, we'll be able to see some real tangible differences in the people that we serve and the services that we provide. Thank you.